What's happening, guys? Welcome into another boxing breakdown and prediction show for this Sunday's Hard Rock Miami Tour between Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul live over on Showtime. So let's get into it now. I'm pretty much going to skip the main event. Here's the rules. You know, no declared winner, no judges, eight rounds, so on. It is a bit of a circus. And look, I have no problem making money off circus events in the past. I was on Jake Paul against Ben Askren recently, but... You know, this no-declared winner format, it did bite me in the ass back in Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. not too long ago. And I'm definitely, you know, not going to go back for seconds. A lot of books have even tucked this fight off the board because of it. At least half the major books over here in Europe haven't got the fight listed. So, you know, if you're going to bet the fight tread lightly, Mayweather is shown at around a minus 900 of William Hill right now if you are interested. But it's just not a fight I'll be getting involved in. On the undercard, however, we did have some decent fights in the shape of Badu Jack versus Jean Pascal. And Jared Hurd versus Lewis Arias. Over the last week, though, that Badu Jack versus John Pascal fight has fell through due to Pascal getting busted for three different banned substances in the system. So 15 and 0 Venezuela and Dorvin Colina steps into the breach. Guys never fought outside of either Venezuela or Colombia. So huge step up from here, obviously. And it should be a routine win for Jack in that one, but at odds of minus 3,300. It's going to be a straight pass from me. So that leaves Jared Hurd versus Lewis Arias for this weekend. And you know, I'm a big Jared Hurd fan, so really looking forward to this fight. Now, there's no doubt Jared Hurd has his issues. He's been a front foot heavy fighter throughout the majority of his career who likes to put maximum pressure on opponents. But, you know, he does have a surprising amount of punches in his arsenal. Then that should be on display here on Saturday night as well. He's beaten some excellent fighters. You know, he beat Tony Harris and he beat Austin Trout. Both failed to go the distance against him. And then Hurd followed that up with probably a standout win of his career against a very dangerous Eris Landy Lara. However... Up to that point, despite being defensively lapsed in spots, no one had really been able to capitalise and putting Horton his back foot as he was so come forward aggressive in there. But that's something big underdog Jason Wellborn was able to do. He backed Hurd up, put him on the ropes, and Hurd honestly looked like a fish out of water, completely unable to fight up his back foot. And even though he was able to come out of there with the knockout, you know, the Sharks were already circling that division. Charlo immediately called him out after the fight. And J-Rock Williams was able to then capitalise on that back foot weakness in the very next fight, you know, the throne in the unified champion in the process. Now, Hurd has took some time away since that loss due to personal issues. You know, he came back with a 10-round decision win last year against Francisco Santana in the co-main event of that Danny Garcia versus Ivan Regcat fight. So since then, he switched trainers. It uh, looked like he was trying to implement the new game plan, boxing off the back foot, trying to lead Santana on the punches and, you know, that's a pretty dramatic shift from where Hurd was at previously. But, you know, as we saw with Oscar Valdez, it's not impossible for a 30-year-old fighter to change his style with the right trainer. And it might be a necessary change here. You know, Hurd was a straight bully at 154, mainly due to his size and aggression. But he was never a fighter that carried much one-punch knockout power, instead looking to wear his opponents down. That's going to be even more so now he's moved up to 160. He faces a fighter on Sunday in Luis Arias, who's a tough gatekeeper level fighter, especially at this weight. You know, Arias did put in a gutsy display against Danny Jacobs and Gabe Rosado before dropping a decision to Irish fighter Luke Keeler over in Belfast two years ago. And, you know, that's been his last fight. Arias has only lost twice in his career, though, with both coming via decision. So he is a tough guy in there. And I like him to go the distance here on Sunday, both with Hurd's decrease in power at this weight and his new back foot friendly style as well under new trainer Kay Karama. So, with this fight being only a 10-rounder also, that creates even more value on the distance prop as well. The fight to go the distance prop is currently going off at a plus 125. That's the side of the aisle. I'm going to be on herd via decision is going off at a plus 150 also. And while I wouldn't put anyone off taking the higher odds there, those questions about Hurd's new style and this being a new weight from just have me settling for the slightly safer option here and taking the straight distance prop and said so. Take Jared Hurd versus Lewis Arias. Fight to go to the distance prop at plus 125 as the play for Sunday. Now, we have a one-year boxing pass special up right now over at Wager Talk. Over $1,100 off the regular price for a limited time only. Crazy discount. So make sure and join us for that. You know, as the busy summer schedule starts to kick in and we start to ramp up the profits in boxing. If you've been following our free pick selections recently, you know what we're talking about in that regard. That'll wrap things up for this, this edition of the Boxing Prediction Show. As always, leave us your thoughts. You can also catch me over on Twitter at the Sports Wolf eighty three and at my handicapper page, Kevin Dolan over at Wager Talk. As always, thanks for listening. Till next time, Slana Walia.